Welcome back everybody for another episode of Grey Ghost Resurrection. This video we're going to talk about the fuel tank, taking it out, cleaning it inside and out, and then addressing the fuel sending unit, um, also known as the fuel baffles. And why do I have two of those and what are all these parts? I'm going to explain all of that in detail at the end of this video. But first we're going to have a look at what I had to do to get the tank out of the ski. Well, after taking some of those fuel lines off, that thing in there is still a problem. There's just not enough room. I took the motor mount off there too, and as well as the the fuel pump here, the little uh, starter starter primer pump is what that is. And it's just still, there's just no way this thing is gonna come out because it's gonna just, it can't get past this thing. So. Only thing I know to do is I have to take the steering off and pull the bellows out of the top of the gas tank to take it out. A little bit of a wrestle getting it out of the ski, but with a little squeezing and pushing, I was able to get it out. And then I took some super clean and scrubbed the outside really good. Um, got all that cleaned up. That's what it looks like after I was finished with that. I also cleaned the inside and got all the gunk out of that too. So now that we've got our tank cleaned up, we need to address the fuel sending unit. Um, it, the one that was in the tank uh, wasn't working. And uh, in fact, uh, the a common thing is what's called the float was in the bottom of the tank. Here's a picture of that. And the way these work is uh, inside the baffles, there's a little circuit board here. It's a real simple circuit board, and it's got resistors in it along the way. And these resistors, there's a little gate here um, that is magnetically controlled. So when a magnet passes over these, it's actually from the backside, it closes that gate. And so the float inside the baffle is floating up and down with your fuel level. And so as it's passing over these gates, it's opening and closing them. And those different resistance readings is, uh, is what your fuel gauge is responding to. And so to know if they work, and we're actually going to do this here, I've got a ohm meter here set. And you basically connect your leads like this. Okay, and I'm going to tilt it where the float's all the way at the bottom and it's reading a 0 0.09. If I let it slide a little bit, it slid all the way to the end and it's zero. So it's going from 0 0.09 to, to zero. And if I let it slide about halfway through, I'm trying to get, it's kind of hard to get it in the middle. So uh, Right about there is a 0 0.07, a 0 0.08. Slide it back a little further. So there's we've got a 0 0.03. So you get the idea as it, this one's working as it's sliding back and forth inside there. We're getting different readings. So both of these actually are in good working order. Um, so why do I have two of these? Uh, I have two of them because I needed to replace this one. And the old one, this was the old one, it had a number of problems with it. You can see this is the circuit board out of it, and that, that stuff there kind of indicates that this there was something going on with the bottom of this that probably wouldn't work anyway. You can, a uh, common thing you can do is you can jump this fuse here. That's the, the famous F1 fuse. They burn out. Um, people cut into the side of the baffles, and they actually solder a little jump across there. Um, you can do that. It's a little tedious, but it's a very common repair on these. I just went ahead and got new baffles anyway because the other problem I had on the old one is notice these nipples are compressed and squeezed from over-tightening these with clamps. Um, there is a, a way that you can straighten those out, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but I did order, sourced a used one, and I made a mistake though, and I didn't I didn't look carefully enough at what I needed. And this is a perfectly fine baffle, but notice all of the nipples are exactly the same size. 
Um, that's fine for a 717 engine that doesn't require a lot of fuel. But on this ski, the 951, um, it needs the bigger ones for your, your two fuel fuel and uh, your, that's your reserve and your main lines, if you can see that a little bit better. So I had to order a second one. So these are both good. They just fit different different skis and different models. Um, this one actually, these were out of round here and squeezed a little bit. And so I took a heat gun and I heated them up very carefully and took a drill bit shank and carefully straightened those out. So now they are perfectly round. Um, here's what that looked like. Okay, so that is uh, everything that we did on that. The one thing to mention here, I forgot, is on these floats, um, they can they can leak, and when they leak, they'll sink. Um, and so, you know, if they sink, then obviously it's not going to work. So when you get a new one of these, either get a new float or uh, or take the existing float, submerge it in gasoline, not water, but submerge it in gasoline overnight and make sure – that it still floats, that it doesn't fill up um, with gas. So that's another common failure point on these. Okay, so all that should take care of our, our fuel tank and our sending unit. Hope this helps, and uh, stay tuned for another episode of Grey Ghost Resurrection.